Hello, welcome to European Open Briefing for Tuesday, January 16th. I'm Rafi Bajan, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be taking a look at the latest developments in the currency markets today. So the US dollar is attempting to make a rebound this morning yesterday. Uh, it did touch uh, three-year lows. Uh, it's only marginally higher this morning, um, mainly with the help of uh, other currencies pulling back, particularly the yen uh, is down this morning following some comments from uh, Japan's finance minister. Uh, the euro uh, has eased off from uh, yesterday's three-year highs. Uh, it did come out under a little bit of pressure on reports uh, that uh, Germany's uh, SPT, SPD party uh, could reject uh, coalition talks with um, uh, Merkel's uh, CDU party despite um, uh, that preliminary agreement we saw uh, last week. Uh, the pound uh, is holding near uh, its one-and-a-half-year highs against the US dollar. We have, we've got UK inflation data coming up. Uh, shortly, so that's going to be uh, very important. Uh, and the QE uh, has come under pressure following a big drop in business confidence uh, in New Zealand in the fourth uh, quarter. So let's start uh, with the greenback. We can see here in the chart uh, in orange dollar yen uh, that low uh, four four months low of 110.30 yesterday. Uh, it managed to rebound to as high as 110.97 uh, before um, falling back slightly to around 110. Uh, point uh, 65. The dollar index yesterday touched a three-year low of 90.28. Uh, uh, it's marginally higher at around 90.50 this morning. Um, so there's nothing really, f uh, no fundamentals driving the dollar weakness. It's mainly on expectations that other central banks will uh, or have started to normalize their policies. Uh, and uh, the fact that the global economic recovery is uh, proceeding uh, faster than expected. So that also means monetary policy being tightened more uh, uh, more aggressively than initially anticipated. So all of that is leading to the these recent moves uh, in the dollar. Uh, plus, we had the Japanese financial Finance Minister Taurasa saying that uh, he's not, although he's not too worried about the dollar uh, falling to around 110.80, uh, he's uh, though concerned about sudden up and down movements in currencies. Uh, so that did help the yen uh, pull back this morning following uh, its uh, strong gains since uh, last uh, week. Uh, let's move on to the euro now because yesterday we had that uh, three year peak of 1.2296, falling just shy of the 1.23 level. Uh, that uh, those gains yesterday were further fueled by comments by um, ECB policymaker, the Estonian central bank head Ardo Hansen, who said that the QE could end in September 2018. Um, so meaning that um, the asset purchases would fall from 30 billion to zero, uh, which some see it as a bit abrupt, uh, but uh, that is becoming a possibility as the Eurozone economic recovery gathers further strength. Um, but this morning we saw a, a small blip there, uh, the euro spiking to just about 1.2210 uh, on German newspaper reports that the SPT's uh, Berlin um, um, uh, Berlin members uh, voted against the the, uh, the that. Uh, blueprint that was agreed with the SPD party with Angela Merkel's party last uh, Friday. Uh, other uh, regions will also be holding votes uh, uh, to uh, so so the national SPD vote uh, hasn't uh, yet been uh, casted. Uh, it's unlikely that the, the nationwide that they will reject the coalition with Merkel's party, uh, but that did uh, send uh, some shivers in the markets uh, this uh, morning. Uh, moving on to the UK pound now, we can see the pound is also doing well. Yesterday it hit a one and a half year high, one point thirty eight nineteen uh, against the greenback. Uh, there are there were some reports suggesting that the EU is taking a tougher uh, stance uh, in terms of the conditions it wants to set uh, for the UK uh, to provide to give the UK a transition deal. Uh, so that is weighing on sterling a little bit, but not too much. We can see uh, pound is currently trading uh, around 1.3784 uh, at the moment. Uh, this week's focus, well, we've got UK inflation and retail today and then retail sales on Friday. Uh, today's inflation numbers are expected to show annual CPI easing to 3% from 3.1% in November to 3% in December. Um, if 
uh, that could be taken as a sign that inflation has peaked. Uh, of course, we're going to need to wait to see a few more months of data to uh, uh, to to be sure of that. Uh, but that could potentially um, dampen expectations of further Bank of England rate hikes, uh, and that could weigh on sterling perhaps. But for now, uh, the main driver for sterling is uh, those expectations that uh, there's going to be a softer uh, uh, Brexit. Uh, and moving on to the New Zealand dollar, we can see the Kiwi uh, touched a near four months high of 0 0.7314 yesterday. Uh, it has retreated quite substantially this morning around 0 0.7273. Uh, we had uh, some business confidence data uh, late yesterday or early uh, this morning, depending on your time zone. The NZIER business confidence index fell to a two-year low of 12 minus 12% in the fourth quarter from uh, plus 5% uh, in the third quarter. Uh, so we're, we're seeing more and more signs that uh, business confidence has been hit by uh, the, uh, the, the the formation of the new Labour-led government in New Zealand, uh, given that uh, they are perceived to be less market-friendly uh, than the previous Conservative uh, government. Uh, What's going to be important for Kiwi traders later today is going to be the bi-weekly dairy auction, uh, which is always closely watched due to uh, dairy being uh, New Zealand's uh, main uh, export. Uh, and finally, let's see what's happening with the Chinese yuan and the Australian dollar, because uh, the yuan did uh, jump to a two-year high uh, yesterday. Uh, we saw dollar yuan falling to as low as 6.4168, uh, and uh, this uh, Quite a turnaround from last week when we saw dollar yuan rising to above 6.53 after the People's Bank of China unexpectedly uh, changed the way it calculates uh, its uh, daily uh, midpoint uh, fix. Uh, but that weakness didn't uh, last very long. We can see um, the yuan reversed uh, higher again, um, and today is also uh, trading near yesterday's highs. Um, it, and also suggests that the fact that the dollar yuan has fallen below six, the critical 6.50 level, uh, it does indicate that the China central bank is comfortable uh, with yuan falling further uh, below that level. Um, and the Australian dollar um, is not doing too badly either, despite the fact that we saw a big drop in iron, iron ore prices yesterday. Uh, iron ore prices tumbled by 2% uh, after it emerged that stockpiles at Chinese ports have reached their high since 2004. So rising inventories is normally negative for commodity prices as it means that um, uh, it's got, there's going to be a drop in demand uh, in the near term. Uh, despite that, the Aussie isn't doing too badly. It's not too far from uh, its four months highs against the US dollar. Uh, it's currently trading around 0 0.7961. Uh, we're going to have very important data on Thursday with uh, Aussie jobs and Chinese G fourth quarter GDP data uh, coming up. Um, and Finally, moving on to today's economic calendar, uh, we did have Japanese producer prices out earlier today. They came in slightly weaker than expected, uh, but didn't see much of a reaction in currency markets. Uh, the focus will be UK inflation data coming up shortly uh, and that dairy auction later uh, in the day. We don't, we're not expecting any major data out of the US. That's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.